Um, welcome back to another video uh, workshop, painting demonstration, whatever you want to call it. Um, today I'm going to talk about my sketchbook. I'm going to show you my sketchbook, the one that I take out when I'm going to go off out painting. Um, usually I go on my bicycle. I've got a couple of panniers on the back. I take a tripod and my sketchbook and some paint and some water. <clears throat> because when I'm out cycling in the countryside, I can go anywhere on my bike, and down little lanes and paths and find beautiful places to stop and paint. So uh, that is what I do whenever the weather's nice. And hopefully the weather's going to be improving later in the week. And I'm going to make a video of me doing exactly that, of being out and about um, painting. Um, firstly, I'll just show you my sketchbook. Um, it's made by a company called Moleskin. Um, it's got a hard, hard back, a piece of elastic which holds the pages down when you're painting. Um, I also use uh, clips, bulldog clips, to hold the pages down as I'm painting. Um, they're beautiful books, and the good thing about these, the watercolour ones, is they've got quite a heavy paper, um, <clears throat> so it takes the paint really well. There's a little sketch I did of uh, the Diglas lock down at Diglas. I started with a pencil sketch and I had more time, so I did a uh, little watercolour sketch. Um, a crane. Um, that's a little watercolour sketch I did down at Diglas lock. Just a quick 10 minute sketch. Um, what else we got? This the page now. For some reason, I started at the wrong end. Uh, little lamp. Uh, you can use the double pages, you, you can open the book up and uh, do quite uh, wide format landscape uh, sketches and paintings. But the paper is really good, it's really heavy and it's ideal for uh, watercolour painting. sketches there. Anyway, the one I thought we'd do today is we're going to do a quick demonstration, or I'm going to do a demonstration after this chat, um, of Worcester Cathedral. Now I went out, I think it was back in the autumn, and it was a lovely day, and I did a, a double page sketch of it. I'll show you there. I'm going to do it. Double page sketch of Worcester Cathedral. Um, I'm not going to get into painting every little bit of detail on the cathedral. I just want an overall, overall feel of the day. So that's basically what we're gonna, I'm going to work from today. I'm just going to do part of the picture, but I'm going to do a watercolour painting of Worcester Cathedral, just literally down the road from me. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Sat down by the river, um, painting there. Okay, so I'll get myself sorted out, I'll come back and we'll, we'll start the demonstration. Okay, um, actually what I've decided to do is do the painting a lot bigger than I'd said earlier. And I've kind of sketched out the whole drawing on this sheet of half imperial watercolour paper. Um, there are going to be a few problems with it cockling and buckling as I paint because I've not actually stretched it uh, properly which we can cover in another video. But, uh, so, we're gonna to have to put up the paper moving quite significantly, because it's quite a large piece of paper. So we'll see how we get along. And uh, But this is gonna be a painting, a watercolor painted very loosely, some sort of uh, late summer autumn colors in the trees, a uh, nice sort of a cloudy sky, similar to what I've done in my previous videos. So uh, let's get started. Right, I'm going to start by using my spray bottle to just dampen the paper slightly, just over the sky. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of Windsor blue and a little bit of cad red, just a touch of cadmium red. I'm going to start by using the, uh, looking at my sketch, using the side of my brush just to a little bit more water 
just want to keep that those edges nice and soft because clouds do have some hard edges but predominantly soft edges a little bit of yellow ochre a little bit of magenta just uh, over the cathedral I want to keep this really fluid if I can and moving nicely and over where the trees are right and switch to a slightly bigger brush a little bit more water down that end and I'm just going to put a little bit more winds of blue using the side of my brush to, uh, to paint in the clouds. A little bit of magenta. Okay, now I'm just bringing the clouds down. We'll probably go back, when this is dry, this wash is dry, we'll go back over the clouds. Very loose, very impressionistic. We'll just see how we go. I'm just going to put in a bit of water down here. Just going to touch it with a bit of yellow across here. dried it off now with a hairdryer um, but you can see that it's still rocking a bit I see I really should have stretched the paper it's just been lazy uh, okay we're gonna jump straight in now and paint the, um, the cathedral no messing about we're just gonna do a little I'm gonna keep it really 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 loose and free. Yeah. Let's keep that loose as we can. I'm using a what is it must be about a half inch, three quarter inch flat brush. I want to drop some shadow in this side while the wash is wet. I like to work wet in wet. And I'm going to carry that down on the roof of the cathedral. The side that's uh, a bit more. There's some little spikes there. Put those up. Watch I don't put my hand over the uh, over the painting. There we go. There we go. So that part almost done. Right, so now I want to come back into this part. Want to draw along this part of the roof of the cathedral. And I'm just using a mix of cobalt, magenta, and there's a bit of ochre in there or burnt sienna just to grey it out slightly and this, this brush is very good because it's covering a lot of ground quite quickly but just check back to my picture All right, these are swap brushes I want to drop this in while it's still wet a bit of raw sienna a bit of magenta just gonna these are some stonework that's on the cathedral. Uh, just going to take that down. Um, this is all in shadow. And the trees. But even though it's in shadow, you can still add some warm colours to it. You'll get some nice, nice effects. 
It does all have to be cold blue, it can be warm greys and that's kind of going down around that tree. And just keep that. Okay, now I'm going to paint the warm stone work down through here. I'm just letting it touch the roof of the cathedral because it's uh, it all helps to link the painting in together, sort of to just tie it in. You don't want a bunch of uh, cut out shapes all looking. There we go. I'll just carry that down. Grey it out a bit. You just see I'm using my brush in very broad sense. I'm not. I hope that's making some sense. I still, when I'm painting, I think most people that your, your heart is sort of racing away as you're painting. You're just hoping you're making the right decisions, and uh, so invariably you are. Well, he says. Right. So now I just want to soften some of these edges because there's going to be some trees here. So I'm just going to clean my brush off and I'm just dampening the edges and then I can filter some trees into this in a bit. I want to put a bit of shadow down here. Touch that blue. Right, I want it to be. Just showing. So, and I'll come back and I'll do a little bit of detail on that in a bit and round here. Just before these dry, I can just do that. A bit more warmth in it. Just do a different little windows. Detail on the church, just to, um, on the cathedral, sorry just to pick up some little shadows it's not a lot <laughs> you know that's underneath the church if you can get these in before the wash is dry completely they soften slightly and look more natural okay now I'm going to start putting in some of the trees um, in the foreground here I'm going to keep them quite simple shapes because if, if you start introducing too much, it will end up looking very messy and bitty. And uh, so I'm just mixing up some lemon yellow with um, just a touch of cad red. And I'm just going to block in these trees from the front. Just using the whole brush. Might just add a little bit of burnt sienna places because they were just turning these trees just referring to my my painting all the time my sketch just to get the overall shapes in with some rather beautiful rusty looking trees sort of purpley uh, colours and Magentary colours. Okay, I'm just adding a bit of blue at the bottom, which will make it slightly grey. This is where I'm going up to where the trees will be later. There'll be a nice pale tree in the background here. Let's have that quite blue. Just use the side of the brush to roll in the brush over the paper to give it a broken edge. And Toby's come to say hello. Hello, Toby. Border Terrier, always coming in here looking for something. He's just found there's nothing on offer and decides to walk back out. There's a little bit green on the bottom, but it was quite bright yellow at the top.
grass was beautiful, green. And the one next to it was slightly warmer in colour, warmer, warmer. So let's let's get these in now, because the trees in the back are going to be a lot darker, so we can cut around these as we paint the trees in the background. That was that's my plan anyway. Quite, they'll be a bit slightly bluer because they're in the distance. It's all different colours in there. So now we've got our first wash of greens and just burying the greens as I move along. Some bright bits, some greyer bits, you know, grey the green out slightly. So it's not. But essentially that's our first wash. Wash of colour of greens. And people have an awful lot of problems with greens. So do I. <laughs> some days kind of look at it and think what should I do okay now we're going to start off by painting or carry on painting the uh, little house here again I'm going to do it really simply I'm just going to block some colors in initially I know it's a nice sort of red color into that I'll drop a bit of blue in a minute just paint around the windows very loosely a bit more raw sienna in there. Eventually, as we get other washes on the picture, on the painting, everything should bed down, settle down. What I'm going to do is just now I'm just going to get a little bit of cobalt blue, just it, with a bit of red on it. I'm just going to, just in places, drop it into that colour just so it tones it down a little bit. Now we want a little bit of raw sienna, cobalt for the roof. Some little windows on the roof now, just keep on and put those in. And the chimneys are a nice reddish colour, terracotta, we just block those in, and like that. it doesn't matter if the paint runs into the roof, that's all fine, and we'll put the shadows in a minute. I'm just going to um, add some more shadow down this side of the, um, the cathedral and on this side of the roof of that part of the cathedral. Keep it ever so loose. Let's get some more card in there. More sienna. And just
bit of blue just along here to so cast a shadow on the roof. And that's that. Just get a little bit more shadow colour. just in places just soften this shadow yeah. strengths on that it's all about as you do one bit you notice another bit that needs doing I'm going to start putting some of the trees in on the right hand side here. I'm just using raw sienna and a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and I'm just going to loosely paint the trees in. Big broad strokes. I need a bit of burnt sombre, cobalt blue.